one more time. This time we're going to look at it from a math perspective and we're going to look at pressures and forces that are required to do what this Yemen UAP has done to the Hellfire missile or what the Hellfire missile has done to the Yemen UAP. So I'm looking at it from a missile perspective because that's that's where we have the known numbers, right? We know how much they weigh. We know how fast they go. We know how big they are. And we can see the action that happens throughout this kinetic story of this whole process here. So let's dig into it. And I did the math and there were some really big numbers. And I think it's gonna be a really telling story. So let me tell you what I did first here. The, uh, I, I measured the path prior and after impact of the Hellfire missile. And basically I took slices of the frames. So I think there's like six or seven frames here of the, the rocket coming in, the impact area, and then the missile leaving or the rocket leaving. So you can see the, the, the angle of attack coming in is the yellow line. And then the way the departure, right? The angle of departure is the green line. And I measured this and it's about three degrees. So now that we know the size of the missile, the weight of the missile, the speed of the missile, and the change in direction of the missile, we can calculate exactly how much energy it takes to make that happen. And if we think a balloon would be, a balloon could possibly do this. So just with the pure math, and before I get into this specifically, if, if it, this is really a fascinating number actually, and it tells you the, the true story of weapons, right? So a Hellfire missile going at its about maximum speed, when it hits something kinetically, it imparts 2.6 million PSI of energy into that object. And that's why it can go through tanks, right? 2.6 million pounds per square inch. That's a lot. Um, and, you know, if you spread that over like a four inch by four inch square, depending on like how it's where it hits and all that, there's it's it's 650,000 pounds per square inch. But still, it all adds up to 2.6 million pounds. It's just how big of a patch is that being spread over. So signif we're talking about significant numbers here, right? The energy involved here is tremendous. So now that we know the speed the so or the shape, um, the, si or the size, the speed, and the um, angle of deflection, we can measure what force it would take to actually deflect a Hellfire missile by three degrees as measured through the video thing that I just did over here. So the math is laying out here. You can review this. Um, they make there's some assumptions that we're making that it's how long how long is the duration of the deflection, and it's basically how long it takes the missile to travel over its own length. So if the missile is this long, how long it takes to travel that distance? Because the assumption is it's going to kind of maybe come in and bounce off. So if it's a bounce like that, then that's the one assumption that we're making. So the, the time is spread out a little bit. It's not an instantaneous impact and 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 kick out. It's a you know it's an actual deflection of the uh, the missile itself. So when you pull all that math together, it's 65,600 pound feet of pressure, which equates to essentially 65,600 pounds per square inch PSI. So with that being said, is there any balloon that we could ever imagine on this planet that would be able to impart 65,000 pounds per square inch over the duration of the rocket moving across it. 65,000 pounds per square inch is the energy requirement to direct or deflect a Hellfire missile by three degrees, which is what we've seen here in this video. There are no balloons that are going to be able to have that much rigidity in it. it they're just not, they're just not. It's not a balloon. It could be something else. It could not, it, maybe it's not a UAP, but I could tell you right now, this is not a flexible membrane object. It could be something else, but it is not a balloon. Even though the calculations have that these things are, it's traveling at the speed of the air, right? 40 knots, whatever. That's, that's a meaningless number, right? We have helicopters that fly and hover in the air. Speed is not a a measurement that can be used to specifically call out what this object is, right? 
because other things can do that. Helicopters can do that, right? Drones can do that. It's not, a, it's not a leading indicator of what the object is. A leading indicator for me is the behavior that we see at impact. And that behavior is telling a very significant kinetic energy story that is not solved by saying it's a flexible membrane balloon system. It's just not. And I, I'm okay being wrong with this. If the math is wrong, I want to I want to know because if this comes up again, I want to be able to be better at it. So please check my numbers, do whatever you can to make it so that I'm wrong. But this is what I'm seeing. It's not it, for me. It's not a balloon. It's not. 